Now to make this great pie mint, I will be using the following. I've got three quarts or 96 fluid ounces or for you non-imperial folk, 2.83 liters of 100% grape juice with no preservatives. I'm going to be using three cups of 100% raw honey that translates into 1.362 kilograms. I'm going to use the juice of one quarter of a lemon. I'm going to be using about a half a teaspoon of Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. Now, if you don't have that, or if you have any other kind of wine yeast, feel free to use it. If you don't have any wine yeast at all, this still works. Now, speaking of which, we're still going to need some regular active dry bread yeast uh, for the following reason. One, we're going to be using that as a yeast nutrient substitute to feed our wine yeast. Again, if you don't have wine yeast, you're still going to need <laughs> the bread yeast to make it work. We're going to need at least two carboys. One to do our start, our primary fermentation in, and the other to do rackings later on. And then we can pretty much switch back and forth as needed. Uh, if you might have noticed, one is slightly larger, the one on the right. That is a four liter carboy as opposed to a one gallon carboy on the left. Reason for that, in my case, is that when I do my first racking, everything above that least layer or dead yeast layer that's down at the bottom of the carboy, uh, when I rack it into a second carboy, the smaller one, it will not leave as much headspace at the top. Just saving myself a little bit of effort. In any case, we're going to need an airlock with bung. And that's to make sure that all CO2 can escape and to keep bugs from getting in. It would be kind of nice, although not absolutely essential, to have a hydrometer with testing tube. One, to help us to determine how much alcohol we've produced at the end of the product and to see if there are any chances of a stuck fermentation, so we can keep an eye on that. We interrupt the list of ingredients to bring you one very important announcement. You're probably going to need a little bit of clean, filtered water. More on that later. And lastly, but certainly not least, we want to make sure that all of our equipment has been properly cleaned and sanitized. And to do that, you can either use One Step or Star Sand, but it is something that you must pay attention to because if anything is going to go wrong, unclean and unsanitized equipment is where it's going to happen. And that is what I'm going to be using to make this great piment. Now to get started, a little bit of kitchen work. One of the first things we want to do is we want to go ahead and pull off these, <clears throat> these things never work for me. Let's pull off the seals of our honey because I found that once the honey gets warmed up, these seals just don't come off. I'm going to try and pull it off that way. I'll do it this way. back in our little bowl here because I've already taken the liberty of preheating some of our water. I'm just going to go ahead and pour that in with our honey. We want to try and get our honey to flow a little, a little easier when we pour it out into our carboy. other pan. We're just going to pour in a little bit of water. I mean, no need to be precise. A quarter, half a cup, whatever makes you happy. Turn the heat on. And I'm going to bring that up to a simmer. Now that our water has come to a simmer, and yes, it would have come to a simmer a lot sooner had I put the lid on, but the lid's in the dishwasher and I decided I was too lazy to wash it by hand. So, putting in our half a teaspoon of bread yeast. Incorporate a little bit. Don't want any floating rafts of, of yeast. There we go. That will dissolve. We can go ahead and turn off the stove. Now using our freshly sanitized carboy and funnel, and I should point out that if you have any questions about the use of your food grade sanitizer, 
consult the instructions on the package. That having been said, let's take off my lid and drop in our funnel. And it doesn't really matter the order. I'm just going to pour in our yeast nutrient substitute and begin the process of pouring in our honey. Let's use this one. Hopefully it's warm enough. Oh yeah. Flows a whole lot easier. I am going to go back later on and rinse out these containers and add those to our mix. Let's move this out the way. And using some of our grape juice, I'm going to go ahead and partially fill our honey containers. Replace the cap and give it a shake. Let's see if we can reclaim all that extra honey that we left in there. And let's go ahead and pour that in. And do it for the remaining two. All right, with that having been done, we can go ahead and add in more of our grape juice. I'm going to fill the carboy about halfway. I want to do it. Put a cap on that one for the time being. That works. Remove our funnel. Put our cap back on. nice and tight because we now want to try and incorporate all that honey that we've got in there with some of our grape juice. And we're going to do that by giving it a good long, good long, vigorous shake. All right, that will do for the moment. Take our cap off. our funnel back in and let's go ahead and fill up the remainder of our carboy. Get back in there. I'm going to save a little bit of our grape juice and we're going to use that to bloom our yeast, our wine yeast. Put a cap back on here for the time being. Now normally I would just simply sprinkle the yeast on top and call it a day, but sometimes I feel like being extra special so I'm going to go ahead and start blooming this yeast. All right, let's go ahead and prepare our acid blend substitute, which in this case is just a quarter of a lemon. Ooh, lots of seeds in that one. Good thing I got a strainer. So we'll just take a, our lemon wedge and our strainer, and we're just going to go ahead and put that in our carboy. All right, let's go ahead and pour in some of the remainder of our grape juice and then let's go ahead and add in our half a teaspoon of wine yeast. Again, if you don't have wine yeast, bread yeast still works. And we'll just go ahead and let that come to a bloom and as far as the remainder of our juice is concerned, let's go ahead and add that back to our carboy. Just to be on the safe side, don't want any bugs to get in, let's go ahead and cover that up with uh, anything that will cover it up that's been cleaned and, if necessary, sanitized.
Now then, using my dedicated wine thief, and this turkey baster, again, has never been used to baste any turkeys, okay? It's just for my winemaking hobby. Let's go ahead and take a hydrometer reading for those of you who have hydrometers. This turkey baster has been, of course, cleaned and sanitized, as have my hydrometer and testing tube. Oh, that's riding high. All right. Let's move this foam out the way. And let's get this out the way. And it looks like the hydrometer reading is going to come in at, looks like 1.126. Let's go ahead and remove the hydrometer and pour the remainder back into our carboy. Put our cap back on. Now since we're about to put in our yeast, let's do one more good shake. I'm going to shake this up for a good two minutes. All right. I'm not breathing too heavily or maybe just a little bit, but there we go. Ready to move on to the next step. Now it's kind of hard to pick this up on camera, but our yeast has bloomed rather nicely. Nice layer of foam on top. We can go ahead and add this to our carboy, start the process of making wine. Go ahead and remove my cap. Go ahead and add in our yeast mixture. Trying to get one last good drop. That'll do. cap back on for the moment. Now for the next very important step after we take off our cap is that we want to put in our airlock. This airlock has been filled up to the levels which are indicated on your airlocks and in my case uh, I'm using a, a mixture of star sand and water. There we go. That will now let CO2 escape, and we'll keep the bugs from getting in, which has been known to happen. And now for the last part of this part of the operation, we want to go ahead and label our creations. We are making a great piment. It's always helpful to label these things in case you're making several dozen batches of wine and you want to make sure you know which one is which. Also, most importantly for me, is the following. We started it on this day, 7-28-2023. And our original gravity, sometimes called starting gravity, was 1.126. Now, for the next several weeks, you probably want to just leave it alone. I used to, when I'm using a wide mouth fermenter, to give, give it a good vigorous stir to incorporate a little bit more oxygen. But if you try that with a carboy, you're just going to make a mess because it's going gonna, it's gonna to foam up and it's just going to be a mess. So I just leave it alone. Uh, after a while, you're going to begin seeing a lot of yeast, dead yeast cells, also known as lease, build up on the bottom. And usually when it gets to be about a oh, finger, finger width for my, my taste, half inch for yours perhaps, or whenever, that's when I go through the process of racking it or transferring everything on top of that lease layer. 
trying not to incorporate the lace, into another carboy and continue the process on a regular basis until the wine goes clear or it's to our liking. Now, of course, all of these steps, the rackings and then the subsequent degassings, back sweetening, bottling, corking, I mean, all of that, you can find all of these steps in my winemaking operations playlist as standalone videos. But you're probably going to keep this somewhere in a nice, cool, dark place. No direct sunlight or anything like that. Just put it out of the way. At the end of the process, in about 12 months' time, it can be shorter for you if you want your wine sooner, we're going to go ahead and do a taste testing. So until then, if you like what you see here, please click on that like and subscribe button. Notified to be notified of any new videos. Better yet, become a member. Better yet, become a Patreon. Help support this channel. So 12 months, I'll see you.